We're coming down from a solar storm that brought aurora deep into mid-latitudes, and it looks like we're beginning to see a bit more sunspot activity. What does this mean for you? Those stories and more in the news this week. This forecast, sponsored in part by Eric Johansson. Check him out at Instagram.com slash Scoobist. Space weather this week has definitely picked up. As we switch to our front side sun, you can see the last in the set of coronal holes that's rotated in through the Earth strike zone. It sent us some fast wind and a solar storm that brought aurora as far south as Colorado in the USA. So aurora photographers are very happy. We've cleared up that aurora drought with much needed beautiful skies. Now on top of that, you can also see there was a solar storm that lifted off in high latitudes and it looks like we're seeing a couple sunspots developing on the Earth-facing disk, and this is good news because activity is definitely picking up. As we switch to our backside sun, you can also see another few sets of sunspots kind of sprinkled here and there. They're emerging quickly and then dying off quickly, but this is one more indication that our sun might be coming out of hibernation and is inching ever closer to starting solar cycle 25. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the first quarter phase on our way to a new moon. And by the 11th, the moon will be over 80% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. After all the attention this past month on the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing, it's clear the 21st century version of the moon race is on. This time, however, there are far more players in the game, and the stakes are much higher. With a myriad of shuttle and lander designs already well underway, the carmaker Toyota has also recently joined the fray, signing a three-year deal with JAXA to jointly develop a pressurized electric lunar rover that will greatly extend the human reach on the moon with an unprecedented ability to explore and even mine resources like lunar ice and shadowed craters. So it seems a lot of things are different this time around than when we first set foot on the moon back in the 60s. The expectations may be higher, but so is our experience when it comes to space missions. After all, we have had humans circling our planet for decades now in what we can call Hotel ISS. Indeed, the glint from the ISS has become an indelible feature of our night skies, seemingly as perennial to our youngest generations as the stars themselves. But with all of this experience comes an expectation that we have conquered the hazards of space and can confidently sail the solar winds in search of distant starlit shores to explore. And if that is so, then why hasn't anyone thought to check the weather? Without an atmosphere on the moon to protect them, astronauts living and working on the lunar surface will need to dive into underground bunkers to shield themselves from hazardous solar radiation storms when they happen, especially once the sun becomes active again. And even sitting in their lunar land rovers, it's highly doubtful these astronauts would be shielded from the intense radiation. In fact, such hunks of metal might actually make radiation doses worse because these metal hulls emit their own radiation when being bombarded by such storms. And that's just the tip of the lunar iceberg. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are coming down from that fast solar wind that hit us just a couple days ago and brought us up to storm levels and brought some gorgeous aurora pretty much all over the western hemisphere. But for now, things are beginning to calm down, and yet we will see another uh, coronal hole rotating into the Earth strike zone, and it could send us some more fast wind near the latter part of this week. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions right now with only about a 15% chance of active conditions but that could stretch into about a 25% chance of a minor storm near the end of the week. At mid-latitudes, we're also expecting unsettled conditions, but only about a 10 to 15% chance of active conditions. So this storm that's coming is not going to be anything like the storm levels that we saw just over this past weekend. But things could still give us another chance for aurora, maybe even a skosh of aurora down at mid-latitudes. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We have a spotless sun right now, so we have no risk for radio blackouts, and that should make you GPS users quite happy. But we are beginning to see a bit more sunspot activity. Even a couple of these little buggers, even though they haven't lasted all that long, they pop up to the surface and dive back down. They've gotten a couple numbers here and there. So it, believe it or not, these little bright regions are actually beginning to boost 
boost the solar flux just a little bit. Last week we were in the mid 60s and now we're getting up to the higher end of the 60s. It's still poor as far as radio propagation is concerned on our stay side, but hey, we'll take any little boost we can get. The nice thing is that we actually are seeing a little bit of these tiny Tim bright spots as they're affectionately called in the community, uh, even on the back side of the sun. So these kind of solar flux numbers may continue to boost easily over the next week. Now also because we're at solar minimum, we are getting more of a cosmic ray flux impingement than we normally would. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is beginning to calm down from that big solar storm that we had just a few days ago that brought Aurora down to mid-latitudes, but the show may not be over. We have another coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth strike zone at the latter part of this week, and it could send us a burst of fast solar wind that could bring some Aurora to high latitudes. So your Aurora photographers don't expect this to be as good a show as just the one we just had, but we still could see some decent views of Aurora at high latitudes and maybe Maybe a chance for some aurora at mid latitudes if you stay on your toes. Now the real exciting bit are the, all the new little sunspots that we are beginning to see on the sun on the earth facing disk and also on stereo's backside. These little tiny Tim bright spots are actually lasting long enough to get numbered uh, by NOAA before they dive back under the surface. So this is a really good sign that we may be seeing activity from the new cycle and the fact that some of the magnetic polarity of these regions are are also showing kind of a rogue polarity gives us a hope that this really is solar cycle 25 trying to kind of rear its head and the sun trying to wake up for hibernation. So all we can do is keep our fingers crossed and keep our eyes on the sun. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.